Good morning. Uh, <clears throat> so I've been switching to for handling stuff to-do list things I've switched in the past few weeks to uh, I forget what it's called it's like a pocket organizer type thing but it's just a sheet of paper um, I don't know if I'm pretty sure I've brought this up before <laughs> It's just this, uh, this little book that you cut out of an 8.5 by 11 sheet of paper. And it's just kind of a bit of origami. Uh, but it's just kind of a, a tiny, handy book. <clears throat> and I've been using that. Uh, also been... You know, it's... I, I don't know what it is, it's just my interests just kind of go back and forth and it's hard to stick with any one thing <clears throat> or rather I pick up I I I seem to actively resist any kind of organization or any type of scheduling so uh, actively or passively I'm not sure <clears throat> Like if I'm bringing Vexus to work every day, and I do it for like two months, then one day I'll just suddenly stop bringing Vexus. And it's not like, I'm going to bring Vexus. No, I won't. There's not a conscious process of it. It gets to a point where it's just a habit that I bring it. Uh, but then, for whatever reason, one day that habit just disappears, and I'm like, oh, I, I forgot Vexus. And then the next day, I usually forget it again. And then the third day, I'm like, I'm going to remember. And then I remember, and then... I don't use it or something. Like I've I've shifted to something else. <clears throat> I'm just I'm just difficult to keep track of. <laughs> so then I usually I try to switch to something else. <clears throat> this has also been the case with my uh, excuse me I'm just gonna. Have to... <clears throat> there you go. All right, I think my throat's clear. Uh, this is usually the case with my uh, notebooks. I would have notebooks and write in the notebooks and come up with ideas and things would pop in my head as soon as I saw the empty pages. It's like, okay, I'll just draw that down. Jot that down real quick. You know, draw little diagrams of things or different ideas. <clears throat> and then eventually, like, the notebook would kind of uh, stop being effective. I, would, I wouldn't draw as much in the notebook wouldn't have as many ideas. I wouldn't check it. I would forget to bring it with me, that kind of thing. And then I would have to switch notebooks. So I, I usually date things and <clears throat> I'll have large blocks of notes that go like the first half of a notebook. And then the date switches to another notebook for like half a year. And then it switches back to the, the first notebook, like the second half of the first notebook. I don't know what it is, but it's just a thing. I don't know. It's some some level of creativity or something. It's interest. I'm not sure, but my brain uh, gets bored with some of this stuff. I guess that's probably a good way of putting it. The other thing is uh, <clears throat> writing implements. And I've talked a little bit about uh, inputs, um, <clears throat> methods of input. What, I forget what I called it. There's different. Uh, I guess it's just input technologies. <laughs> this is, uh... No, not the Kurotoga. This is the Kakuno. The Pilot Kakuno uh, fountain pen. And it's, uh, it's like a beginner's fountain pen. And I just kind of like the styling of it. And I've liked it for a long time. <clears throat> like, years. And uh, I only recently got one. And since I've got it, I've just been... I guess excited about it or interested in it, so I've been using it for lots of stuff and been finding it to be a very good pen. And with that pen, you know, ideas just flow. Things flow out of my brain. Uh, it's, it's inspirational, kind of, I guess. <clears throat> well, that was the other thing, like this paper. Um, you can fold this up out of any, any 8.5 by 11 sheet of paper. Like I said, it's just some origami, but I've been writing in this using those pens, uh, and I have 
of a few other ones. Uh, oh, this is the product of the product of ten years' work. Um, I have this uh, had this. I think Boker Boker makes a bolt action pen. And as soon as I saw that they had made it, I said, oh, that's really cool. I would love something like that because I've, I've been on the lookout for pens. I always try to carry a pen. Uh, I've been on the lookout for pens that will not activate in your pocket and not leak. And they must write as soon as the pen hits the paper. Because if I'm jotting stuff down or someone's talking to me on the phone and I need to get something written out real quick and the pen misses a beat or misses a stroke, um, I can't, I can't stand it. It's super annoying because usually once it misses a stroke, you go right over that exact same spot with the same stroke and it doesn't work and you got to scribble and you move to a new spot. It's, it's the weirdest thing. I can't stand it. It's super annoying. So finding pens that always write, uh, was the first step. And so far the Fisher Space pens always write until they're almost dead. Um, and if anything, like the earlier ones, would get a little bit of over ink. I, get, I would rather it have more ink than, than less. But the Fisher Space Pens were the only ones that uh, really had a very consistent writing process across all kinds of paper, because I would draw, I would pick any, any kind of paper I wanted. Um, so putting a Fisher Space Pen into a body that would uh, sit in my pocket comfortably, have a clip that can be fixed, uh, repaired, so that if that clip becomes out, bent out too far, uh, you know, if it's plastic, it, it'll usually just break. You can't fix it. But if it's steel, then that's fixable, but it has to also be removable. So anything where you can tighten up the clip, pocket clip, uh, put it in your pocket safely and have it not activate, and take a Fisher Space Pen cartridge. So there are a few... Um, Zebra has some steel pen series. I think it's the 702 and the 401. No, it's the 402 and the 705 or something like that. But you can combine those to get a complete steel bodied pen. Um, and I used that for a long time with a Fisher Space Pen insert. It's a slight modification to get it to work with the Fisher Space Pen. But it still had that upper, it was just a, a regular click top. Uh, and it had a it had a, a retention spring so that it was harder to click, uh, but it would still activate in my pocket and still, you know, my blue ink would get on my, my gray pants. So I was still looking for something like that uh, that would take care of it. And I saw that bolt action pen as a potential uh, perfect fit for that. So I was like, all right, this is cool. I'll, I'll make my own, or I'll get one of these. And it was like stupid expensive. And as far as like the pen body went, the bolt action was like way up here. And I was figuring the bolt action would be like down by your thumb so you could just sit there and type and unclick it. <clears throat> oh, that's another aside. Uh, Fisher Space Pen makes a, they call it the military or something. It has a terrible clip, but the, act, the click action is the best action because the, the entire top half of, or top third of the body is the clicker. So you can, while holding it in your hands, pinch with your upper hands and pinch with your, your two fingers and click the pen shut. So you pull it out, click it right, click it shut, and then put it in your pocket. And that would have been the perfect one, and I looked for a long time at modifying, maybe I could do it now, uh, modifying the powder-coated body to, uh, to take a better clip, uh, but I couldn't find any real way of doing it. <clears throat> so I moved on. And I just figured at that point I had access to machine tools and I was like, well, I'll just make my own pen with blackjack. Um, so I made this and I was a total novice on a lathe, but I didn't lose any, any body parts. So, <laughs> so I made this, uh, this upper portion here, this aluminum insert and, uh, threaded the body or threaded the, uh, the bolt for it. And that was a super fine threads. And, uh, so it's just... It's just about this long, and it's it fits that bolt on the side, and it has a sleeve for inserting a Fisher Space Pen cartridge. And uh, it's actually such a tight fit that the the bolt, when you when you screw it in, it actually holds, it retains the uh, 
uh, the, the space pen insert into the, uh, the sleeve. <clears throat> so about the time I finished that, I lost access to the machine tool shop because we moved. Uh, and I never really got one, got access to one again. <clears throat> so I was like, ah, you know, one of these days I'll figure, I'll finish that pen. Uh, and I found it recently. It's like, you know, I'm good enough at CAD and got a 3D printer enough that this might, uh, I might actually be able to do this. And uh, it was. So, finished out. I actually had some of this work done already. But I just started fresh. I would like to... So when that comes down, holds on the side. I would like to be able to uh, bring this body up a little bit. This is a little close for me. Uh, bring it up to about here so that this just barely sticks out. And then 3D print a, a pocket clip on the side of it. Because the body is, you know, who cares about the body? Uh, I can print more bodies, and they, they're pretty easy to print <clears throat> and quick. Uh, but as far as, you know, it, if it had a pocket clip on it and it was a little bit taller, that would be it. Like, I, I would expect this would not activate in my pocket, uh, and it would sit in my pocket, and you can easily, you know, click it on and click it off one-handed. <clears throat> and that might be, uh, you know, that might be the end of my, my clip search, my, my pen search, um, but in that ongoing search, I had picked up one of these, which is, I think it's called a Flow Downforce, Pilot Downforce. Um, I can, I can write very finely, so the Japanese pens do really well with me because they have to write very finely, uh, and I, I like to, um, so this is a uh, external clip. I've been paying attention to different pen actions for a long time because I've been wanting to find one that would not activate in my in my pocket. <clears throat> and this is a good a good way of doing it. It's a gel pen insert, but whatever. Uh, but it has a a clip. It is not a not a strong metal clip, but it is a thick spring clip, and it does have a wide a wide range on it. So it's probably going to be just fine. Uh, and it is a lot thicker than most plastic clips, so it's it's made this clip is Solid it's made for that, but the clip is what actually holds the pen in place so that when you put it in your pocket It will unclip Unclick and once it's in your pocket You know and that that pen isn't or the clip is not touching you cannot activate the pen it just releases uh, My only complaint about it is or complaints, I guess. So the whole thing's a bit too thick. If it were made of uh, metal of some kind, it would be ideal. Uh, but the whole thing is very thick. Uh, my pockets tend to be filled with things, and having a, a bulky pen is unnecessary. Uh, but for like a, a shirt clip, something like that, very good. You know, then the the bulky body <laughs> reminds me that it's there, uh, and is also very easy to grab. And you don't have to worry about it activating in your shirt and, you know, spilling ink all over your shirt. <clears throat> so that's really cool. I like writing with fountain pens. I find it kind of, you know, inspirational. Oh, the, the Kakuno also has a, a little bonus feature. Let's see if we can get that. Got a little happy face there. <laughs> So that Kakuno, uh, <laughs> look at this, it's very thick, it doesn't have a pen clip, it actually doesn't lend itself to having a clip, so adding one to it, <laughs> I might have to like drill the side or something like that, but yeah, it's just, stuff like this is what, what kind of gets me, is like, I'm looking for a very, obviously, a very, very specific pen, <laughs> so much so that I, I started machining my own pens, and then something like this comes along and is completely, completely impractical and uh, completely impractical but still very inspirational and I'm like, well I'll just carry this <laughs> and it's annoying and I lose it uh, in my pocket and it's hard to, to have it and it's not, you know, the fountain pens are not uh, super, you can't really knock them around very much because they tend to, the, the, the ink flows out and you'll get smears and stuff. but. It, it, it's like a, a sensitive, impractical fountain pen. 
And while I'm looking for these hyper practical pens, I'm also like, oh wow, I really like this. I'm gonna carry this. Man, this is annoying to carry, but I'm still gonna carry it. It's just whatever whatever the, the inspiration is, whatever whatever strikes me, I guess. It's what it is. It is what it is. I haven't figured it out, I just go with the flow, man.